this place is truly special. I've been here once before with my best friend and Grand Canyon is one of the most visited landmarks in Arizona and to enjoy its beauty you can go to the Grand Canyon National Park which is located in the north of Arizona. The park is home to much of the Grand Canyon, it's about a mile or 1.6 kilometers deep and up to 18 miles or 29 kilometers wide. Sharing the moment of admiring this incredible Grand Canyon it's one of the viewpoints here from where you can see the majestic nature creation. The air at the Grand Canyon is among the cleanest air in the United States. After all, the elevation of the South Rim is around 7,000 feet or a bit more than 2,000 meters above the sea level. No one is completely sure about the age of the Grand Canyon. It has long been believed, though, that the Colorado River began carving the Grand Canyon about 6 million years ago. And can you imagine that it's still changing shape? The Colorado River flows through the canyon, which, combined with wind and rain, shapes it over time. One thing is for sure, Grand Canyon is a must-visit place and we were so lucky to be able to see it. The next must-visit place is Horseshoe Bend, which is also referred to as the East Rim of the Grand Canyon. It is located near the town of Page, only 5 miles from the beginning of the Grand Canyon National Park. The bend in the Colorado River is absolutely breathtaking. The water in the river below is emerald green in summer. You can tell I couldn't stop admiring it from different angles. But as adventurous and spectacular as it may seem, one should be very careful visiting it, as unfortunately there have been a number of accidents there. The horseshoe bend left us simply in awe and we couldn't stop admiring it. The next breathtaking landmark in Arizona is a 10-minute drive from the Horseshoe Bend and it's called Antelope Canyon. It includes two separate scenic slot canyon sections, referred to individually as Upper Antelope Canyon and Lower Antelope Canyon. We went to the lower one, located a few miles from the Upper Antelope. Antelope Canyon gets its name from local Navajo stories regarding antelopes that grazed along the canyon in the wintertime. The canyon was formed by the erosion of Navajo sandstone due to flash flooding and other subaerial processes. It's just amazing to be here and to be able to touch the million year creation. Without a doubt, Antelope Canyon is one of the most visited and most photographed slot canyons in the Southwest America. It became the highlight of our trip and I totally recommend visiting it. To be able to get the most from traveling around the state, one should have a car. We rented ours. So, about 130 miles from the Antelope Canyon, there is another place worth a visit, and it's called Monument Valley. Monument Valley Navajo Tribal Park is one of the centerpieces of beauty on Navajo land and is one of the world's most recognized landscapes. Beautiful red sandstones, as you can see now, push skyward from the vast expanse of desert floor, creating a striking set of formations. This unusual earthscape is so inspiring and magnificent that it has become one of the most photographed sites in America.
Monument Valley is located within the Navajo Nation on the border of Arizona and Utah, and it is perhaps the most famous example of the classic American West landscape. Monument Valley has been widely used in media due to its prominent symbol of the Wild West, and numerous films have featured the valley and its monuments. The Monument Valley Navajo Tribal Park includes hiking trails, camping areas, and a 27-kilometer or 17-mile scenic route for driving around the park. And of course, we have to take advantage of that. The place is great for taking pictures and exploring, of course. The whole area is dominated by dry valleys and there are giant rocky outcrops all over the place that make the valley totally unique. I actually ended up coming back to the Monument Valley a few months later and I had more time to explore the place. Now, this place is truly special. I've been here once before with my best friend and uh, this time I was just so close to this area driving to Colorado and it would have been you know, a mistake not to come here again. It's really special. And today is also a part of a three-day festival here, basically the Hot Balloon Festival. And if you want to see the whole valley from the, uh, from the bird's eye view, that would be a perfect time for you to come here. And now also the shuttle bus that I'm taking through the whole valley is also for free today. It's amazing. I just got lucky. <laughs> now that rock over there is called Thumb, Thumb Rock. Well, that makes sense. Very similar, right? <laughs> so did I enjoy the Monument Valley? I absolutely loved it. It's another gem among others in Arizona. Our next stop was the place within 100 miles away from the Monument Valley, and it's called Four Corners. This is where four states meet, and we have Arizona, we have Utah, we have Colorado, and New Mexico. So it's a really unique place called Four Corners. Since it's the only location in the United States where all four states meet, it is definitely worth the visit. It is interesting that most of the landmarks in Arizona are located in the north of the state. One trip was not enough to visit all of them, so the second time when I was in the area, I decided to visit one more special and beautiful place, which you will see in a few seconds. In the meantime, here are some really cool sites you can enjoy while road tripping from Utah to Arizona. So one more picturesque spot worth visiting is called Lake Powell. It is a man-made reservoir on the Colorado River in Utah and Arizona. It is a major vacation spot visited by approximately 2 million people every year. You can probably see why. I definitely got lucky with the clear weather as it allowed me to see the lake and its amazing blue color. But even though it was really bright and sunny, it was also very windy. But it didn't stop me from enjoying the place. Until now, we have seen a lot of red rock formations, but it would be a mistake to think that this is the only landscape seen in Arizona. If you drive further down the state, towards the capital, Phoenix, you will be surprised at the change of the landscape. From rock formations and desert, there will be pine trees. 
Not for long though, as quite soon, somewhere between Flagstaff and Phoenix, you will see another spectacular Arizona desert town called Sedona, which is surrounded by red rock formations, steep canyon walls and pine forests. A must-visit place there is the Red Rock State Park, which features a red sandstone canyon. Inside the Red Rock State Park in Sedona in Arizona, and these are the dramatic views that you can see from the top here in particular. It's called the Cathedral Rock and it's one of the most famous photographed views in the whole Arizona. There is one more prominent feature about Arizona that we haven't seen yet. I'm talking about cactus. The Salara cactus is one of the defining plants in Arizona. These plants are large, tree-like, as you can see, columnar cacti that develop branches or arms as they age, although some never grow arms. If you want to see more of the cacti in Arizona, head to the Saguaro National Park in Tucson, in the south of Arizona. You can totally witness saguaro cacti up close on one of the many tracks available around the park. But what about the capital of Arizona, Phoenix? Well, we didn't get to do many things there. Apart from walking around the downtown area, we went to Scottsdale, which is actually filled with luxury resorts and fine dining. The place, however, I enjoyed a lot about Phoenix was the Desert Botanical Garden, which collects desert species from all around the world. There are about 50,000 plants in all, counting large collections of cacti and agave. So, Arizona, how is it? I love it, and I would totally go there again and again if I had a chance. But the real reason why it became so special to me is because of my best friend, who shared this trip with me. And without her, it wouldn't have been the same. 